Good morning, Ignatian. Nice to meet you again to another day of practical research. Too. So I am your PR2 instructor again, Sir Kevin. I would like to introduce to you our new topic for today, Lesson 3, The Nature of Variable. Let us begin. So let us begin with the variable first. What is the definition of variable? So this definition is based on the book. The term variable has been mentioned several times so that it is necessary to find it here. In research, a variable refers to a characteristic that has two or more mutually exclusive values or properties. So we see variable, variable, it is a quantity or quality that varies. It is a defined concept. So if we say a defined concept, it is based on the particular study. It could be observed or it could be measured. So for example, kung ang variable mo ay constant and doesn't change, probably it has no interest. Variable also can manipulate the variable to see what will happen to, the na to another variable. And then, dapat nagbabago ang variable. Diba nga sabi ko kanina kasi pag constant and it doesn't change, Probably it has no interest. So, kailangan niya, nagbabago ang variable. So, it change another variable or uh, it change the variable to influence the another variable. Kasi nga, ano ba yung nakikita doon? Kasi kailangan types of variables. The first type is continuous variable. Let's define it first. This is a variable that can take infinite number on the value that can occur within the population its values can be divided into fractions therefore it can be broken down into fractions or decimals for example age the age for example infant the infant is a three and a half months another kung ikaw ay mo 20 na pwede mo sabihin na i am a 19 and a half year old right, another example Height. Sa height can be broken down into decimals because we have the centimeters and meters. Yung feet. Next, temperature. Temperature, we have, for example, 72.2 degrees Celsius. Zero degrees Celsius. Okay, those. Those are, those are um, measured into decimals or fractions. Next. Continuous variables can be further categorized into two types. We have the interval variables and the ratio variables. But before we compare these two, let us define first interval variables. It has values that lie along an evenly dispersed range of numbers. It is a measurement where the difference between two values does have meaning. This have meaning. So, ibig sabihin, it has an equal intervals between adjacent categories. It has an order. For example, the in temperature may illustrate as the difference between a temperature of 60 degrees and 50 degrees is the same as difference between 30 degrees and 20 degrees. So, as you can see, anong difference meron ng 60 sa 50? Diba 10 degrees. Sa 30 at 20, 10 degrees then. So, kahit mag iba sila ng number, pero magka magkapares sila ng differences, parehas lang yung range nila. And then, dito sa interval variable, dito sinasabi na wala siyang absence ng zero. Kasi may, nagmibigay siya ng meaning sa zero. Mamaya, I explain that. So, before I explain that, let us go with the ratio variables. It has values that lie along an evenly dispersed range of numbers when there is absolute zero. So, pare sila na may dispersed range of numbers, pero kasi si ratio variables may absolute zero. Dito sa interval, wala. Example, sa height, sa weight, sa distance. Most scores stemming from response to survey items are ratio level values because they typically cannot go below zero. Si ratio lang yung bumabase sa pagkakaiba-iba. Dito kasi sa interval, lagi may pareho. For example, dito, sa ratio variables, si 10 pounds ay doble ng 5 pounds. Pero sa interval variables, hindi naman pwede na si, 40, si 80 degrees ay doble ng 40 degrees kasi magkaiba yon ng level ng init at lamig. 
iba sa kasi degrees ang pinag-uusapan pero sa ratio variables iba na pag ganun no uh, for example dito meron kasi siyang absolute zero pag meron siyang pag meron siyang absolute zero ibig sabihin may absent ng zero for example sa weight hindi mo naman pwedeng sabihin na ikaw ay zero na weight bakit kasi ano ka, papel, hindi ka naman papel na wala naman timbang, hindi ka naman bulak na walang timbang, di ba ganon? Sa height din, ganon, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na zero height ka kasi ano yun, hindi ka naman, hindi ka nag exist kasi ultimo yung langga, may measurement din ng height, di ba? So, yung distance, meron din siyang absence ng zero. Bakit? Kasi hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na zero yung distance kasi hindi mo pwedeng ikaw ay nakatambay lang tapos walang distance, nakatayo ka lang doon, di ba? Stable ka lang. No? Ano pa yung pagkakaiba, yung pagkaiba nila? compare sa absolute zero sa walang absolute zero. For example, sa temperature. Kasi nakikita nyo naman, sa interval variables ay laging, ang example nga in temperature, sa ratio variable ay laging height, weight, distance. Kasi sa temperature ng interval variable, may walang absolute zero. Kasi si zero ay may meaning sa kanya. Si zero ay malamig. Kasi nga, may meaning dito. Wala siyang absence ng zero. Dito sa ratio, may absence ng zero. Diba? Si height tsaka si weight. And then, yon ang pagkakaiba nila. Let us go with the next one. A variable, which is discrete variables. This is also known as categorical or classificatory variable. This is an any variable that has limited number of distinct values and which cannot be divided into fractions. Therefore, these are counted. These cannot be broken down into fractions or decimal. For example, sex. Sa sex, we have female and males, di ba? Di mo pwedeng siya ay one-fourth na male, siya ay one-sixth na female, di ba? These are counted. Unlike doon sa kanina na can be broken down into fractions. Yung kanina yung continuous. So, magkaiba ang continuous sa discrete. Next. Sa so students, yun din, di mo pwedeng sabihin na one-fourth of the students. So, ito ay lahat ay counted. Next. Clothes. Ganun din ang clothes. No? Another example. Ano ba ba mga example? The number of children. Number ng family. Ganun. Those are discrete variables. Okay. So, let us Proceed to the next one. Discrete variables. Discrete variables can be also categorized into two kinds. It has the nominal variables and ordinal variables. So let us define the nominal variables first. It represents categories that cannot be ordered in any particular way. It is a variable with no quantitative value. It has two or more categories but does not imply ordering of cases. So, if you see you are just labeling, naming objects, but it doesn't mean, for example, you are just naming green, blue, yellow, yung objects, pero it doesn't mean na si blue ay better than green, si green ay better than, better than orange. Or for example, eye color, or you just naming color green of the eye, color blue or in business type then Billy John yeah, you're just naming them ito tung variables these these are often used in qualitative research design next ordinal variables it represents categories that can be ordered from greatest to smallest this variable has two or more categories which can be ranked Dito sa ordinal variables, para sila nominal na nagdinaming, labeling, pero magkaiba sila kasi si nominal variable, hindi siya nagra-rank, walang ordering. Dito sa ordinal, ordinal variables, may ranking. For example, educational level, income income brackets. O yun, educational level, may, ano, meron siyang categories, pero may ranking. For example, sa educational level, tertiary, secondary, yon tapos junior high senior high and then yun yung sa LM di ba so yon may level ano yung highest ano yung lowest that's it next several experts have lumped together the following as the major kinds of variables so these are the major 
kinds of variables, the independent and dependent. These are the broadest. Okay, so let us start with this, independent variables. Those that probably cause, influence, or affect outcomes. They are invariably called treatment, manipulated, antecedent, or predictor variables. So these are the cause of a particular topic. Stand for cause, it is manipulated, it has the ability to stand alone, and it is changing. You are changing the independent variable. For example, sa mga halaman. Tatlong halaman. Sa tatlong halaman na yon, ikaw yung nagdidilig. So, yung pagdilig mo sa tatlong halaman na magkakaiba ng height, yun yung independent variable. Pero yung mga puno na iba-iba yung height, yun ang dependent variable. Mamaya, papaliwanag ko. So, example, a study is on the relationship of study habits and academic performance of UTNH as senior high school students. So, si study habits, siya yung independent variable. Kasi, it has an influence. It has an influence. Kasi, si study habits, siya yung nagbibigay dun sa, student, sa academic performance. Kasi, since manipulated yung study habits, kaya natin siya mag -aralan. It can stand alone. Pero si academic performance, ano yung mga factors sa academic performance? Is ito yung dependent variable. Diba? So, si study habits, siya yung independent variable. Yun. And sabi dyan, no? Ano, the influence the outcome of the performance of the student. Ayun. Siya yung nakaka-influensya. Siya yung cause. Siya yung dahilan. Okay, so the dependent variables. Dependent variables, those that depend on the independent variables, they are the outcomes or results of the influence of the independent variables. So, ibig sabihan, ito yung effect. Kung kanina si independent siya yung cause, si dependent, ito yung effect. So, tinatawag din siyang responding variable. It depends on the other variable. So, ito yung measure, Ito yung sinatawag natin outcome ng study. Future outcome ng study. So, kanina, si independent, siya yung nag-change, nag pero ito, siya yung measure For example, a study is on the relationship of study habits and academic performance of, okay, yung kanina lang din na example. So, kanina, ang example natin, si study habits yung independent variable. Ngayon, ang, ang dependent variable ay si academic performance kasi si academic performance, it cannot stand alone. So, hindi naman natin pag, pwedeng pag-aralan si academic performance na walang mag i sa kanya, like study habits. Ano pa ba yung pwedeng mag-influence sa academic performance? Cigarette smoking. Diba? Marami siyang pwedeng i-partner sa academic performance kasi nga, siya ay dependent variable. No? Next. natin, si independent variable, eto yung nababago. Eto yung nilalagyan mo ng amount ng water, yung provided na tatlong halaman. Ngayon, si dependent variable, ano yung magiging resulta base doon sa paglagay mo ng tubig? Kasi yung paglagay mo ng tubig, yun yung independent variable kasi you are manipulating. And then, dependent variable, eto yung magiging outcome, yung result. So, yun yun. Next intervening or meddling variables. Variables that stand between the independent and dependent variables and they show the effects of the independent variable on the dependent variable. So we see stand between at yung tumatayo sa gitnaindang independent tsaka dependent variables. Siya yung nagfi-filter kung ano yung magiging effects ng independent sa dependent variables. So for example, Consider it given below. Even if farm production is good, if the attitude towards payment is negative, loan repayment would be low. So, ibig sabihin, si production is good, yung production, yung farm production, eto yung independent variable. Ngayon, meron siyang mafilter niya kung maganda ba or mali. Ngayon, sa, pag, sa attitude kasi ng farm production, sa attitude nila towards payment, eto yung magiging may intervening variable yung attitude towards payment. Tapos, ang magiging dependent variable ay yung lo loan re repayment. Kasi pag yung attitude nila ay good dun sa farm production, 
magiging positive ang repayment. Magiging low ang repayment kung magiging negative ang attitude. Ganon. O, for example, ayan, so nakita niya yung attitude towards payment, siya yung nasa gitna, siya yung meddling variable. Siya yung nagpifilter kung ano yung magiging effects nun doon sa loan repayment. Ganon. Next. Role variables. A special types of independent variables that are measured in the study because they potentially influence the dependent variable. So, for example, ito yung kanina dun sa halaman. Kung sa halaman, pwede tayo maglagay ng control variables na kailangan nakaka-influence sa dependent variable. So, paano mo, paano mo papanalit, mapapanatili na magiging tama ang study mo? For example, ang control na nalagay mo variables ay kailangan nakatapat sa araw so kailangan may araw doon, sunlight, sa halaman kailangan ganito ang lupa kailangan ganito ang pagkakatayo ng mga halaman so yun yung maging control variables next they may be demographic or personal variables that need to be controlled so that the true influence of the independent variable on the dependent variable can be determined. So, ito din. Pwede ko din maglagay ng control variables doon sa independent variables. For example, ang topic mo ay bullying sa academic performance ng estudyante. Ngayon, ilalagay mo yung personal info like age at gender. Doon makikita kung sa age sino ba doon yung madalas na nabubuli at saka sa gender. So, that's it. Those are the control variables. Next. As we have the confounding variables. Variables that are not actually measured or observed in a study. They exist but their influence cannot be directly detected in the study. So, eto nga, meron siya pero hindi siya masyadong nadedetect talaga sa study pero um, it is not actually measured, sabi nga dito. Sabi kasi ng mga researchers, it is not, uh, it is, may have operated to explain the relationship between the two variables which are independent dependent variables. And then, eto ay tinatawag na extraneous variables. Pag sinabi extraneous, eto yung mga nakikita nila after ng study kapag na-complete na. For example, yung kanina sa halaman ulit, halaman ulit. Kuwari, ang experiment mo ay dalawang halaman. Yung isa, tinakloban mo ng kahon, yung isa hindi. Pero may sunlight, maganda yung weather. Tapos after ng study, nakompleto mo na lahat, tsaka mo nalaman na okay ba yung tubig? Na yung tubig ba okay ba? Bukod sa weather, okay ba yung sa kinatatayuan ng halaman? yon Another, pwede yung extraneous na extraneous variables na belief, kung ano pa yung gusto maki another information doon sa mga, sa variables. Yan yung beliefs, yung age, yung gender, yung demographic, prof demographic profile, yung cases. Ayun. Tapos yung status, pwede rin makita. Yun yung mga extraneous variables na labas na sa mismong study mo. That's extraneous confounding variables. Okay, so next. Okay, so our lesson for today is already done. So I will upload the task on Google Classroom. And see you next meeting.